Good morning. Welcome back to the well. Are you excited to worship with us today? Because we're very excited to have you. Aimwell Baptist Church is located in Mobile, Alabama on Dr. Michael E. Jackson Boulevard, where we're under the direction and leadership of Pastor Trey Woolfolk. The Aimwell family motto is to love well, live well, and lead well. Connect with us, please, on our various social media platforms. That includes Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So whether you're in the house or at your house, it's about to go down. Enjoy the worship experience. Lord, we need you, Lord. We need you. 
So many things are happening, so much is going on, God. So, Lord, we just thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you for the word we're going to get, God. Lord, that it be our need, God, what we're standing in need of, God. Some encouragement, some enlightening, God. Lord, we know, God, that you know, God. So, Lord, it's nobody else like you. And we thank you. We thank you, God, for giving us this day. We thank you, God, because you didn't have to do it. We praise you for it, God, and we honor you. Yes. And, Lord, we're going to give you the glory because you're worthy to be the praise. Yes. So, Lord, we just thank you for this day. And, Lord, we pray, God, that you grant this prayer and grace. In your son, Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. say I'm grateful to be alive today hallelujah it may be rainy outside but the good news is the sun is shining on the inside do I have a witness in here that can give God praise that you can know that while the storms are raging you got a Jesus who can stand by you in the storm do I have a witness in here amen Amen. How many are grateful to be alive today? How many are just grateful? Come on. Come on. You. Come on. Put those hands together. It may not be exactly the way you want, but the good news is you're still alive to see it. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm glad to be alive today. Yeah, I'm glad to be alive today. Glad to be alive today. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, Aimwell. It is such a joy to see you all today. Amen. It's good to be seen and not viewed. Amen. So I'm grateful to be here today. Listen, I want to cover a few things as we're pressing our way today. I want to, first of all, thank God for letting us see 136 years. God has been so good to our church, and because of um, God blessing us the way that he has, uh, we are not a church of people who have just kind of just kind of jumped from church to church to church, uh, but our church is, has a rich history of members who have been members for a number of years, and we ought to thank God for that, amen. So, of course, to those of you that were celebrated last week, 
uh, those that were, have been members 40, over 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, as even as high as 70 years. Uh, we, we give God praise and honor for you. Amen. And I, some of the pictures are on the screen from last week, just in case you missed it. There are some people who perhaps did not get their uh, resolutions. Everybody was given a personalized resolution. I know normally we do that during a funeral, but I think we ought to give people's flowers while they can still smell it. Amen. And so we are grateful for them, and all of you um, understand one of our members, Sister Mary Taylor, was under Reverend Bazell, which was the second pastor. Amen. Could you give God praise for her? Amen. Amen. And so, and so I just thank God for the rich history that exists in our church, and we ought to be grateful for that. Amen. Amen. Listen, also, I'm grateful today to wish a wonderful happy birthday uh, to Brother Edmund Gaines. Amen. Let's give God praise for him. Amen. Amen. And then a couple of days ago, Brother Craig Coleman celebrated his birthday. Let's give God praise for him. And then on last Sunday, I forgot to mention, Brother Harold White celebrated a birthday as well. Amen. Amen. Anybody else that has a December birthday, would you please stand? Please stand. If you have a de come on, amen. God bless you. Yeah, come on. Let's, let's come on. Let's thank God for all of these people. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. Amen. We're so grateful. Listen, brothers and sisters, of course, I know there were some that did not have the opportunity to participate in uh, our giving opportunity, sacrificial giving opportunity, because uh, perhaps you weren't here or maybe uh, you didn't have it last Sunday. The good news is you could still participate and sow that seed. Uh, because, brothers and sisters, you all did an amazing job uh, in your giving and your generosity last week. And so, listen, I want to encourage you, don't miss this opportunity. Uh, as I shared with the church last week, uh, when we give, it's our, us putting our seed in the ground. And whenever you put seed in the ground, something has to grow. Amen. And so I want to encourage you, if you just in case you missed the opportunity, just in case you didn't have it last week, that's fine. Uh, there's still time that you can sow. And all I ask that you do, that they have those envelopes available that says, I love my church. If you will fill those out and place it in there and just write these words on there. This is my seed. Because uh, we're believing that the seeds that we're going to plant here in December, that we're going to see a harvest in 2023. Amen. And so we give God praise for that. Now, of course, we are preparing for the end of the year. God has been uh, good to our church uh, in 2022. Of course, you understand uh, how challenging that had this year has been. But the good news is he brought us all the way to the second Sunday of this year. And we ought to be grateful for that, that God has done that. And so we are grateful for that. And, of course, uh, of course every, every year, I told you last year, uh, the first Sunday of the year, uh, which is actually January the 1st, which is my birthday, uh, amen, I'll be celebrating another year, um, and so, bless you, amen, and so um, that will be our Focus 23 Sunday, of course, some pastors take off on their birthday, but listen, there's no thing that I'm going to do on my birthday other than bring you the word of God. And so, listen, that's going to be on a very, very important Sunday for us that we're going to find out what God has laid on my heart. I'm going to be sharing, consecrating myself this week to hear from God, to hear what our spiritual focus for the year 2023. Of course, this year, our, our focus was to become rooted, and I believe God has done that um, in the last 12 months. And so I want to, can't wait to hear and see what else God has to say for us and has in store for us to focus on in the year 2023. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. Amen. Listen, well, we have, just in case we have some guests today, we have some guests today. If you are a guest today, wave at us, wave at us, wave, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it like you just don't care. Wave it, uh, wave it. Amen. Listen, listen, all right, all right, all right. Okay, you, you being shy over there, okay. Okay, you ain't got, okay, wait, wait. You couldn't hear me, okay, good. Are you fine? Amen. Let's give God praise for our guests. Amen. And I want you to know that you could have worshipped anywhere, uh, but for whatever reason, God led you to Aimwell Missionary Baptist Church. And Aimwell, let's show her how we feel about it. Yeah. 
Come here, son. Come here. Let me, let me introduce you. Come here, son. I, um, I have been blessed to, as, I, as you all know, I've been a, I was a youth pastor prior to coming here, and um, the Lord knitted certain young people uh, to my heart, um, and I was this young man's youth pastor uh, when he was about eight years old. And, uh, you know, some people say, don't take your work home with you. I didn't, I didn't understand that part. And this young man adopted me uh, as his godfather about, about 12, 13 years ago. And I want you all to meet my youngest godson, Justin Harris. Would y'all give him an Aimwell welcome? Um, amen. I'm grateful to him because uh, he said, Pop, he told me two, three weeks ago, he said, Dad, I just, I just want to come. Just promise me this. When I get out of school for the semester, you're going to let me come, and I can spend as long as I want to uh, with you, uh, which also means I'm going to spend as much as he wants me to spend uh, while he's in time. And so I'm grateful. I'm proud of you, son. Uh, he, he actually set the record at Fort Valley State for the, the longest kickoff return for 95 yards. He plays football. <laughs> Amen. And, and is, is making some great grades, all A's and B's this semester. Amen. And uh, we're going to get that dean's list next year. Amen. Would y'all help me thank God for my godson? Love you, buddy. Well, how many of you came for a word from God this morning? Amen. Right before we get ready to go, I'm going to dismiss our children's, our children's church. Uh, any children that are here, uh, our children's church is open today. Uh, any children, uh, you can please, uh, amen, would you please come to the front? They're going out the back. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. Amen. Let's receive our praise team as they come to share the word of the, the worship song with us today. Amen. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide. They tremble at his voice, they tremble at his voice. And how great is our God. Beginning at the end, he's the Godhead, three in one. Oh, Father, Spirit, and Son, the Lion and the Lamb, he's the Lion and the Lamb. How great, how great. God, and all will see how great, 
how great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me, how great, all will see how great, how great. day we thank you give us the word today a word that challenges a word that convicts a word that comforts a word that often helps us to change God I pray that you hide me behind the cross 
Let these feeble lips, this feeble spirit stand strong in your word. And God will give us that word today. In Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Acts chapter 14. I'm going to go back there. We have been there for the last couple times that I've preached. I think there's something else God wants to share with us today. Of course, Acts 14, I want to read a lengthy text today. Um, but we ought to read the Bible a little more, shouldn't we? Amen. Acts chapter 14, verses 11 through 20. Amen. For our consideration today. I'm reading from the NIV. As long as your Bible says Bible, you're in the right book. Acts 14, verse 11 through 20 says, When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the language of that day, the gods have come down in human form, and Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and reeves to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their robes and rushed out into the crowd shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We, too, are only human, like you. We are bringing your, you good news, telling you to turn from the worthless things to the lip, but to the living God, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. And in the past, he let all nations go their own way, yet he has not left himself without a testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons, he provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside of the city thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. I want to talk very simply from this thought. Don't get lost in the crowd. Would you look at somebody help me preach this and say, whatever you do, don't get lost in the crowd. That was the wrong neighbor. They still sleep. Find somebody else. Said neighbor, no matter what the crowd says, don't you get lost in the crowd. Lord, let me preach. In this part of Paul's first missionary journey, there are three crowds that surround Paul. He comes into contact with these three crowds in Acts 13 and 14. There's a crowd in Antioch in Acts 13. There's also a crowd in Iconium in Acts 14, verses 1 through 18. And then there's also, I'm sorry, 1 through 10. And then there's also another crowd that is located in Acts 14, 11 through 20. The crowds, brothers and sisters, are interesting because each crowd, while they, are, they have a different location, they also come with different challenges. And the challenges of these crowds, brothers and sisters, may, may be tempting for Paul to step away from the crowd. But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that there are some crowds that you just got to go through. I tell you, brothers and sisters, I wish I could tell you that there were some things that you could avoid. I wish I could tell you that there are some crowds that you can go around. But there are some crowds that are just assigned to your journey. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, these crowds are unavoidable for his first missionary journey. And the option to lose them is not an option. The option to avoid them is not an option. And brothers and sisters, as if Paul makes up in his mind, since I can't go around it, I've got to go through it. And I tell you, that is the testament of a soul that is determined and that is resolute for God. It's when you realize that there are some seasons, some things that you just got to go through. And I'm sorry, your prayer life is not going to get you out this time. 
mother's prayer, daddy's prayer, it's not going to get you out this time. But there are some things that you just got to go through. Come here, David. David told me to tell you, yea, do I walk through. Must understand, brothers and sisters, that he starts off saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside uh, these Christ. He, he makes me lie down in green pastures, and he keeps me on the right path. Then it says, I got to go to the valley. Which means sometimes if I'm following my shepherd, sometimes I just got to go through. But the object is, is to, for you to be able to go through without it going through you. In other words, brothers and sisters, Paul is trying to urge us that whatever you do, no matter what the crowd says, better yet, no matter what the crowd does, don't you get lost in the crowd. That is because, brothers and sisters, the, the, the admonition I have for you this morning is that sometimes if you start to listen to the wrong crowd, that crowd can suck you in and have you thinking like they think about you. If you listen to the wrong crowd, they'll have you questioning things about your journey that God never wanted you to question. So God says to us today, don't you get lost in the crowd. This message is for somebody who's in leadership, somebody who finds themselves leading on a job, leading in your family, leading in ministry, and perhaps, perhaps your challenge this morning is that somehow with all of the crowd, you got lost in it. And because of you got lost in the crowd, sometimes that crowd can have you thinking like them. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, the punchline of the passage is this, how you handle these crowds will determine the quality and the quantity of the next crowds that God sends to you. If you can't handle these crowds, I want to tell you, you can't handle the future crowds that God has for you. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, this, this text is teaching us how we shouldn't, Tavares, get lost in the crowd. Number one, I think it's teaching us this, that don't get lost in the praises of the crowd. Are y'all with me here today? Don't you get lost in the praises of the crowd of the crowd. Brothers and sisters, these people saw a, a stupendous, miraculous work happen right before their eyes. The text says that there was a lame man who could not walk and Paul and Barnabas healed him and the Bible says that the man got up and started walking like he'd never been hurt. And brothers and sisters, this miracle, this, this, this act of God, brothers and sisters, gained Paul some notable attention. But also, it also gained them some unwanted attention. Because after they see that this, the Gentiles see that, they, that, that Paul and Barnabas can heal sick people, the Bible says that they tried to make them Greek gods. They decided they would make Paul, uh, they make him Hermes and make, and, and make uh, Barnabas uh, uh, Zeus. And they decided that, that because of what they've done, because of what they've seen them do, that they're going to worship Paul. They're going to praise Paul because of what he's done. Now, can I tell you, brothers and sisters, Paul teaches us is that the worst thing you can do is get lost in the praises of people. Because can I tell you, brothers and sisters, the same way they can praise you. It's also the same way they can take you out. They told Jesus on that triumphant Sunday, Hosanna to the highest. But by Friday, they was yelling crucify him. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, the temptation that we all must face is not to get lost in the praises of people. Because when we get lost in the praises of people, brothers and sisters, we allow people's praise to inflate our ego, inflate our pride. And can I tell you, the most dangerous place to be is lost in your own pride. Because you do know pride will, 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 won't let you see what you need to see. But it also will let you see stuff that you don't need to see. See, sometimes, brothers and sisters, when you are full of pride, you think you're better than you really are. 
That's why you can't let people push you up, as the young people would say, gas you up, because sometimes that same gas that they put in you is going to eventually run out because people have a way of gassing you one day and deflating you the next. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, the, the main reason, if you can't get it yet, that why you can't get lost in people's praise is because people's praise is always temporary. I was talking to my son the other day while we were having dinner, and I said, son, don't you ever get lost in people's praise. Because the same people that cheer let you do something that they don't like. And perhaps that's the reason why somebody is devastated today. Because people in your family, hmm, when you were doing what they wanted, oh, you were the best thing in the world. But the one time you said no, all of a sudden you hadn't done anything. I wish I had some real people in this house. That's why you can't get caught up in people's praise because people's praise is temporary. Now, let me make this confession. I don't keep up with current events. I don't keep up with them. I don't watch the news like that. I have people on my team who would let me know what's going on. But perhaps there has been two particular things that's happened the last week or so that have caught my attention that really speak to this point. Now, I know I got some Jackson State people in here. And let me, let me rush to tell you, I wish that Coach Prime would have stayed longer. However, to call the man looking for the money, he's all about the money, well, you do realize the man is worth 50 million. So what's 300,000? Y'all ain't got to say that, I know I'm telling the truth, to a person worth 50 million. If he was about the money, why would he take half of his salary and give it back to the school? Now, when he joined Jackson State, he was the hero of HCB, HBCUs. But once he made another decision. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say that because I'm talking about Jackson. I got you. No, no, no. I got you. I got you. I got you. Brittany Griner, a WNBA basketball player, got locked up abroad. And as soon as they locked the girl up, all of us was, was picking and all of us was marching. All of us was posting stuff. But as soon as they let the girl go and they found out that they traded an arms dealer for the girl, the same people that wanted her free are mad that she got traded for. And my question to people, what do you want? You said you wanted the girl free, but how in the world are you going to get upset? That only means, brothers and sisters, you can't get caught up. Because the same people who want you free will be mad that God let you out. <laughs> Do I have a witness in here? This is why you have to have something more motivating you. Because if there, I must re reflect what I said last week, if their com compliments elevate you, then those complaints are going to el eliminate you. Look at somebody and say, don't get lost in their praises. That's why Paul, the Bible says, tears his clothes because he wants to show them, I'm not a God, I'm just a man. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, I don't care how much God blesses me as your pastor and blesses our church. Let me tell you, let me rush to tell you, I'm just a man. Don't you ever get beside yourself. Don't you start looking at me like I'm a God, like G No, 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 no. I, I put my pants on just like you. I got the same temptation just like you. Look at somebody and say, don't look at me like that. I, 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 yes, I'm saved. Yes, I'm called. But yes, I still got some issues. Do I have a witness in here? Is there anybody here that can say I'm human? No, no. I know you see me shouting. I know you see me speaking in tongues. But I still can cuss you out if I want to. Is there anybody here that can say I'm human? That's why we got to stop judging people when we find out that people are human. You doggone right we're human. And let me tell you, 
before you so quick to talk about people, let me tell you, the same human temptation that they fell in can get you too. Do I have a witness in here? Here's the second thing. Here's the second thing. He says, don't get lost in uh, the praises of the people. But secondly, he says, don't get lost in the protests of the people. He says, don't get lost in the, in the protest. What's the protest, Pastor Trey? Well, Acts 13, 50 says that the Jews of Antioch stirred up some persecution against Paul and Barnabas. He moves to Iconium in verses, verses 1 through 2, Dick says this. The same thing happened in Iconium that happened in Antioch. Some other people stirred up some stuff against Paul and Barnabas. Can't you see Paul? He was in Antioch doing God's will. And some people who didn't like it started stirring stuff up. He got to Iconium. Some people in Iconium, after they saw what God was doing through him, started stirring some stuff up. Why is it that everywhere he goes, people keep stirring up stuff? That's somebody's issue today. Seems like everywhere you go, people keep stirring up stuff about you. I'm talking to some Paul in the room, a some Pauline in the room, who your struggle is, Pastor, why in the world is everywhere I go? I got off the last job and, that, and I had somebody trying to get me fired, but somehow God blessed me with a new job and now I got another person. Because brothers and sisters, sometimes I hate to tell you that your anointing attracts attacks. Let me tell you, the call that God has on your life. I wish I could tell you that there's so many positive things, and there are. But can I tell you, there are some protests that come with the promise that God has on your life. Because the brothers and sisters, he went to Antioch and they stirred up some stuff. You do know people are specialists at stirring up stuff, right? Don't look at nobody, look at me. But you know some people. They can make a problem out of anything. And you got to be careful because when you're, when you're in the crowds of people who like to stir up stuff, sometimes you are tempted to internalize what they're stirring up. And sometimes it'll have you thinking that you're the problem. Sometimes it'll have you thinking that you are the blame for what they are feeling. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, don't you ever get to the place where you allow other people's problems to become your problems. You got to understand, they may not like you. They may not treat you right. But their mistreatment of you is more about them than it is about you. I wish I had some help in here. Because I'm talking to somebody who has internalized long enough some of the stuff that's been happening to you because somehow you think it's all because you've done something wrong. Can I tell you, my Bible lets me know that sometimes attacks are just simply a part of my assignment. And I know you want me to tell you that your assignment is going to be full of promise and all of this stuff without problems, but can I tell you, there are going to be some people who just like stirring stuff up. Ah. And what bothers me about people that stir up, if they put that same energy in stirring up their own gift, then they wouldn't have a reason to be jealous in the first place. Do I have a witness in here? And so the word for you, just in case that's you, don't take it personal. I don't know who I'm helping today. I hope I help up somebody. Because I'll be honest with you, I, I wouldn't plan on preaching today. I wouldn't plan on preaching this today. But God says, no, somebody at Aimwell is about to take something personal. It's painful, but don't you take it personal. 
Because when you take it personal, you make it, you make it about you. But my therapist said something to me in our last session this week. He said to me, Trey, that's their problem. It's not yours. And can I tell you something? And I'm saying this to myself too. What other people think about you is none of your business. What other people say about you is none of your business. God says, don't you take it personal. Whatever they got to say, it ain't your problem. Because sometimes people mm, fight you because they can't fight themselves. Do I have a witness in here? Don't take it personal. That means when people act like that, leave them where they are. If you read the text every time, the Bible says this, y'all. It says in Antioch, they, they ran them out. In Iconium, ooh, I just, I just got a download from heaven. Let me tell you what happens in Iconium, y'all. The text says that that they secretly decided that they were going to stone Paul in Iconium. Because we've been in this text closely, you know that they stoned him in Lystra. Iconium is the second spot before Lystra. But what happens when they decide to try to stone him in Iconium, mm, the Bible says somehow Paul heard about it ahead of time and decided it's time to leave. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, you know you got God's hand on your life when God lets you hear stuff that you're not supposed to hear. I wish I had somebody here. And can I tell you, when God allows you to hear the stuff that's being said about you, understand this, it's not for you to have a confrontation. It's not for you to confront people and say, yo, you think you don't know what I said to you. But can I tell you, it's really God's confirmation. So because God wants you to hear the conversations he's been hearing about you. Do I have a witness in here? And is there anybody here that can say, I thank God that he let me hear some stuff. That I ain't got to say nothing to you. I thank God that he let me hear it. Because when he let me hear it, he was letting me know that you weren't designed for my life. Do I have a witness in here? Some of y'all ought to thank God that he let you hear what was said about you. You ought to thank God that God let you hear some stuff. Not for you to confront, but to confirm who is really in your corner. Do I have a witness in here? Huh. Here's the last thing. Am I helping somebody today? I don't know who this is for. Oftentimes, God puts me up here, allows me to live stuff that I end up having to preach about. Because sometimes God will use my life as a witness to let you know. And can I tell you the blessing of 17 years of ministry? God let me hear stuff that I wasn't supposed to hear so I can know stuff that he wanted me to know. And let me tell you this, let me get, I feel led to share this. There are people who said stuff about me who don't even know that I know. Because it's not for a confrontation, it's for confirmation of who God has not assigned in your life. Do I have a witness in here? Here's the last thing, I'll let you go. The last thing is this, not only he says don't get lost in their praises, not only does he say don't get lost in their protests, but here's the third thing. Don't get lost in their problems. <laughs> yeah. The text says that then the Jews from Antioch and Iconium came and won the crowd over. <laughs> that word won there, you understand we've already covered this because it literally means to tranquilize. Remember we talked about this a few weeks ago. And you know what a tranquilizer is. It's a strong drug that renders a person unconscious. Can I tell you, there are some people, there are some drug dealers 
who know how to tell such a good story that it can drug people to think that you're somebody that you're really not. Can I park here, put, put a quarter in a minute and park here for a second? Let me encourage y'all about one thing. What we got to stop doing as a people is getting half of the story and taking that half and spreading it like we got the whole story. Because I'm going to tell you something I've discovered about people. Some of the worst villains can play some of the best victims. What does that mean, Pastor? Just because the story sounds right, you don't even know that you may be talking to the person. See, that's why we can't, we got to kill drama and kill mess when we hear it. But instead of killing it, we carry something that we don't even know whether or not it's true. I tell you, there are some strong liars. Oh, y'all gonna act like y'all don't know no liars. If you ain't saying amen or clapping, you may be. Preach, Pastor Trey. I'm doing the best I can. People know how to tell good stories. Hmm. And let me give you, let me share this with somebody today. You know, I've discovered this, Terrence. I'm going to look at you. I've discovered that some of the main people talking are the main people who are really the problem in the story. Because can I tell you, that's why you can't try to, see, see, see the villain is always trying to convince everybody that the person is not who they really are. But the victim is not trying to convince anybody, they're trying to heal from what they've already gone through. So just because they ain't talking don't mean that that's true. I'm talking to somebody who's perhaps about to spread something because you heard it on the job. Spread something because you heard it around town. But God told me to tell you, don't you spread anything because you don't know the whole story. Do I have a witness in here? Because what happens to virus when people have been drugged, when people have been tranquilized, some people know how to infect others with their lies. I know they're infected, Dolores, because the Bible says that these people that just tried to worship Paul now want to stone him. Paul, let me tell you something. Pauline, let me tell you something. One of the things that's going to make it hard for you, one of the problems you got to deal with, is that some of the people that want to kill you is people you tried to heal. And they only want to talk about what didn't happen. But they never want to talk about what you did do. Because I'm talking to somebody, you got somebody bad-mouthing you now. And you gave them your last. And can I tell you, they may not ever tell the other side. But can I tell you something that I ought to give you another five nights of sleep? God already knows. And since God already knows the whole story, you don't have to tell, look at somebody say, you ain't got to tell your side. Look at somebody and say, keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Do I have a witness in here? Because what you got to understand, beloved, is that sometimes the problem with people, the problem with some crowd are the people you try to help are going to be the people that try to hurt you. But can I tell you what you've got to learn how to do is do what Paul did. Notice in the text that these people that he once tried to heal, helped, uh, that he was trying to help, they are now trying to kill him. The Bible says that they think they kill him. They think they get him down. But verse 20 says, but after the disciples came around him. Yeah. See, we've been, I've preached this text three times. And every time I read that part, y'all don't shout. I'm going to read it one more time. Antioch, they tried to kill him. Iconium, they tried to kill him. Lystra, they thought that they killed him. But in verse 20, he got up. When the disciples surrounded him, 
What you trying to say, Pastor Troy? Yes, you got a crowd trying to kill you, but you also got some disciples that's trying to heal you. And can I tell you, instead of you being mad and upset about the people who turned their backs on you, why don't you be grateful for the people that still got your back? Do I have a witness in here? And is there anybody here that said, I'm not mad at my haters. I'm not mad at the people lying on me, but I thank God for a praying mother. I thank God for some praying friends. I thank God for some praying family members that can pray me through when other people want to break me down and he is there he can he can he can anybody here that can give God praise that in spite of what they're doing to you God sent you somebody to stand in your corner do I have a witness in here and let me invite you child of God that while you're being grateful understand this that even the bad crowds are a part of your journey and I want to encourage you, don't you get lost in the crowd. Because remember this, Paul. Remember this, Pauline. You ain't doing it for the crowd. You doing it for Christ. And I want to encourage you today. Instead of you getting lost in what they're saying about you. Lord, I didn't feel like preaching like this, but I feel like preaching now. Look at somebody and say, don't do it for the crowd. But do it for Christ. Because only what you do for Christ will stand. Is there anybody here that can say only what you do for Christ, only what you do for God will stand forever? Do I have a witness in here? And he is. I feel like preaching. I promise I didn't feel good when I pulled in, but I feel good right now. He is. Is there anybody here that can give God praise that you ain't serving for the crowd? You ain't doing stuff for the crowd, but you're doing it for Jesus. Do I have a witness in here? Do I have a witness in here? And he is. He is. He is. Is there anybody here that can give God praise that you ain't serving? You don't give the people for them. You ain't being a good person for your family, but you're doing it. Because one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know, I know, I know, I know it was the blood that said for me, do I have a witness in the building? And is there anybody here that can help your pastor preach and close this little series and look at somebody and say, nay, nay, say, nay, say, neighbor, I believe that church is over and I'll see y'all when I see you. Peace. But is there anybody here that say, I'm not doing it for the crowd, but I'm doing it for Jesus. Because you do understand that there's no greater example of not to get lost in the crowd than Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness in here? Because if he would have got lost when they said Hosanna, he never would have made it to the cross. If he would have got lost when they said crucify him, he wouldn't have got to the cross. But once he got to the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Because God told me to tell you, you're going to have to learn to forgive some people who may not be sorry. You're going to have to forgive some people who may still be trying to hurt you. But can I tell you, let me echo what I said last week. No matter what they did to you, they were dead wrong. I've got to get out of here now. But can I tell somebody here, don't you fight another rumor. Don't you fight another lie. I'm trying to deliver somebody today. I don't care what they say. Because what God had for me, it is. I said it is. It is. It is for me. Tap yourself. I said tap yourself. And say it's for me. No rumor, no lie, it is. For me, it is for me. Listen.
listen, 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 church. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know who this is for. I know it ain't just for me. But let me tell y'all, the crowd is thick. The rumors are real. The lies are heavy. But hear me. Don't get lost in that crowd. Listen, I've had people to do the same thing they did to you. People I tried to help. But you know people never tell the good part. Hmm. They only tell the one-sided, slant side of what happened. And you know, I, that was a time in my life, that was a life, and that was a time in my season in my life where I thought I had to go defend myself. That's your problem. That's why you're exhausted. That's why you can't enjoy Christmas, because you, you're still thinking about what they say. And you're saying, but pastor, they need to know my side. But hear me. God knows everything. And can I tell you, there is no greater equalizer than God. And God's going to let you come to a day where you can say like Joseph, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for my good. Let's stand. Let's stand. Were you blessed today? Listen. 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 Hear me. Don't get lost today. Let me pray. Let me pray and then we're going to give the invitation. Listen. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that in spite of how the crowd may be, in spite of how the crowd may be, God, don't let us get lost in it. God, even if the crowd of people who we were good to, even in the crowd is people who don't even know the whole story, that God help us to find peace in the fact that since you know all things, it may have caught us back off guard, but it didn't take you off guard. And God, just like you got the world in your hands, you got their lies in your hands. You got their rumors in their hands. But God, thank you that in spite of all the stuff you have your hands on, thank you for keeping your hand on us. That's why it didn't get in the best of us. That's why we didn't lose our mind because your hand is on us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. Let's get ready to go. Come on. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I got one question for you. Were you blessed today? Were you blessed by the worship and the word that God just gave you today? Listen, my name is Pastor Trey Wolfolk. I'm the senior pastor of the Angwell Missionary Baptist Church, a.k.a. The Well, a place where we love well, live well, and we lead well. Listen, I'm so grateful that you chose to worship with us on our Aimwell Anywhere platform. That is, you can worship with Aimwell from anywhere, anywhere in the world. You can worship with us today. And for whatever reason that you came to worship with us today, I want you to know we're grateful for you. And if you've been blessed today, would you go ahead and hit those hearts, hit those hearts, just to let us know that you've been blessed by the worship and the word that went forth today. Listen, brothers and sisters, just because you are on our online virtual platform does not mean uh, that you can't receive Christ because the same Jesus that meets us in person is the same Jesus that can meet you right where you are. Again, this same well anywhere. You can get Jesus anywhere. You can receive Jesus anywhere. And no matter where you may be in your life figuratively, Maybe you're not necessarily, oh, pastor, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Listen, none of us are doing everything that God told us to do. But the good news is every single day, this is another opportunity, another chance to get it right. So I would love to uh, introduce you to Christ today. If you want to know, get to know Jesus Christ for yourself today, I want to encourage you. That's a QR code at the bottom of your screen. You can put your phone on it. Uh, you can uh, do that and it'll take you through our website and you can get connected with us. And within the next few days or so, uh, we'll connect with you, get in touch with you so that we can walk you through the plan of salvation. Listen, it's simple as ABC. Admit that you're a sinner, believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin. 
C is confess and make you safe. It's A, B, C. It's just, it was simple, it's simple for us, but it wasn't that simple for him because he died for our sins, all of our sins. Anything that you commit now and for the rest of your life, he died for everything that you could have done. But that's the good news of being saved, that you don't have to be perfect because he covered all of the things that we were not perfect in, but he just asked that we continue to walk and follow him. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, I'm already saved, and that's cool. But can I tell you, there are some wonderful churches that you can be a part of. And maybe you're saying, I'm not really for the in-person thing. I would rather worship from where I am. That's cool. You can still have fine church membership, even at Aimwell, uh, from wherever you are. Uh, if you want to be a part of our church, I would love to be your pastor. We would love to be your church family. And we would love to minister to you uh, each week uh, through our worship and through our word and even our Bible study that God speaks to you. We would love to be your uh, Aimwell Anywhere family. So you can be a member from anywhere, no matter where you are. We have members already in other states, other places that, that tune in regularly. And also support through giving as well that, are, that are, don't even live in the Mobile area. And so we're grateful for that. Listen, you can become an Aimwell Anywhere member. We would love to have you. Listen, brothers and sisters, whatever you want to do, if you want to give your life to Christ, you want to uh, come a part of our church, you can use that same QR code to take you to the right screen, to our website, get us, we can get connected to you and we can make sure that we get you connected to Christ as well as the Aimwell Church. Listen, we're so grateful again for your presence today. We hope that you've been blessed today. Right before we get ready to go, I'm going to pray God's covering. Then we're going back into service, okay? Listen, thank you so much again for worshiping with us today. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for the word and the worship that you allowed to go forth today. And we ask that our brother and our sister were blessed so much today. Hide the word in their hearts that they may not sin against you. We love and praise you and we honor you. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you so much, online family. Thank you for worshiping with us again at Aimwell. Anyway, this is Aimwell Missionary Baptist Church, a place where we love well, live well, and lead well because we are the well. I see you when I see you. Peace. At the well, we have five unique ways. Here at the well, we have five unique ways that you can give. You can give by envelope, by mailing your gifts, to Post Office Box 40337, Mobile, Alabama 36640. You can give by Glibify app, which is available on Apple Store as well as Google Play. You can also give by text to give by texting your desired amount. prepared over these next few weeks to be a blessing to our pastor who is doing a tremendous job leading us. Let's give him a hand. And so I would, I'm asking on behalf of, of our church family and everybody that we would come over these next few weeks and let's be a blessing, a phenomenal blessing to our pastor for Christmas and seven days later for his birthday. Those of you who can and will. Um, hopefully he can't hear me, but he probably can because I'm not supposed to be up here right now. But uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, over those next two weeks, that's December 25th, and his birthday happens to be New Year's Day, January 1st. While I'm standing, the Health and Wellness Ministry is collecting coats and blankets for the homeless. Uh, please come prepared next week if you would like to donate a, a coat or any kind of outerwear or anything of the such uh, for our homeless coalition. Our health and wellness ministry is in charge of that right now and they will be taking those donations. The 20th is the last day that they've asked persons to come out. Uh, if you can and will please, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going back to Pastor's birthday and Christmas now. Please also pass the word. Those of you who are hearing me online will have this cash app up so that that would go straight to him. And if you choose to use an envelope, kindly use the I love my pastor envelope and don't put it in your tithes and offerings envelope. That will help us uh, tremendously. Thank you so much. Okay, Brother Herb, you can resume. 
Amen. Located in the Green Central Area of the Church. Our mission statement here at the world is to change the world one soul at a time. Through our commitment to love well, live well, and lead well at the world. Also on last Sunday, I forgot to read a thank you card from Brother Edmund Gaines and Sister Ruben McPherson. Special thanks to you. Kind hearts are the gardens, kind thoughts are the roots, kind words are the flowers, kind deeds are the fruits. Thinking of you and giving thanks for the wonderful person you are. Again, for Brother Edmund Gaines and Sister Ruben McPherson, and our noonday prayer person, Sister Ernestine Longmire, has asked that we put any noonday prayer request over to my left uh, in our prayer request box right over here. Thank you so much. Amen. Were you blessed today? <laughs> it's uh, 1051, I think. Amen. You better get to Ruby Tuesday and get back home by 12. Amen. Amen. So listen, we're getting ready to go. Of course, brothers and sisters, happy birthday to all December birthdays. Again, we're grateful for you. And uh, God has just been good to our church. Amen. 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 Certainly, we want to be uh, praying for uh, our bereaved families. And let me say this as we get ready to go. Um, of course, family, uh, holiday season is, is, is supposed to be a happy time. But the truth is, for a lot of us who've lost people, a lot of people have gone through some traumatic things, this season is a depressing season. So I feel led to do this before we do our offering today. I want to pray um, for somebody who's battling grief today. I'm going to pray. We're going to get ready to go. But I want you to understand, um, take your time to grieve. I don't care if they've been gone for a few years, 10 years. Listen, sometimes this feels like it just happened yesterday. Some of y'all lost parents almost a decade ago. But it feels like it just happened yesterday. And you see things that remind you of people. Listen, listen, some of y'all lost children. Listen, let me tell you. Give yourself space to grieve. Paul says... We should grieve. We should shed tears. But Paul said this. When we shed tears for people we've lost, we don't shed tears like those who have no hope. That is, if they were a child of God, we know we're going to see them again. So I want to encourage you, listen, take your time. Don't you, try to, don't you try to fake it. This ain't the season to fake it. This is the season to be real and say, you know what? It's hurting. I miss mama. I miss daddy. I miss my sister. You got to say it to yourself. Give yourself the freedom to be human. You ain't as tough as you want people to think you are. Y'all with me here today? So let me pray. I'm going to pray for somebody that's dealing with grief, and then we're going to do this offering, and then we're going home. God, I, I pray for somebody whose heart is heavy during this holiday season. I pray. I feel the tug on my heart and my spirit for somebody that is struggling. They're fighting tears right now cause of some things that's going on in their lives and some people they've lost but in the name of Jesus it's actually send your spirit to comfort them your spirit to work on them maybe this is their first Christmas without that love I pray for strength right now I pray for peace right now I pray for comfort right now over their hearts over their minds it's in Jesus name we do pray everybody say amen Listen, if we have any guests today, we do have a guest. I know we have one, we have some other guests today. Would you wave at me one last time? Any guests? Any guests? Come on. Let's thank God for our sister. Amen. Amen. This is Sister Angela Westry. Would you stand, grab your things, and follow her? Follow her? Yes, follow her. Right there. Amen. And, of course, if you want to give, we'll encourage you to give on your way out. Come on. Let's thank God for our sister again. Come on, brothers and sisters. Let's thank God. All right. All right, let's, let's lift our gifts up. Lift our gifts up if you're ready to give again. Uh, if you did not have a chance to give towards or 
sow that seed for church anniversary. We encourage you to do so. Make sure you write on that. This is my seed on that, on that envelope. Raise that, raise that gift. Raise that gift and say, repeat after me. Say, Lord, thank you for another opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you've given to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Well, were you blessed today? All right. All right. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for these your people. Bless us as we leave this place, never from your presence. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Section 5. God bless you. God bless you. Love you. Love you. Section 5. And Thank you so much for joining us today at the well. We hope that you have received not only encouraging words, but also uplifting words to get you through the week. Thank you so much. And don't forget, come back next Sunday and join us at the well, where we live well, lead well, and love well. Don't forget, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank mm -hmm. you.